You are listening to TF Talk News, part of the TF Talk network of podcasts and live streams, where we give you the most relevant current stories in your fandom and more, all within 30 quick minutes or less. I'm your host, Mr. Starscream, and I'll be your guide to everything worth talking about that transformed since last episode. It's your home, buddy, Starscream. I am the new leader of the Decepticons. From now on, you will take orders from me. <laughs> Discover more of our great shows at tftalk.net and follow us on social media channels at tfylp. Can't you smell it in the air? The pain, the fear, the angst of collectors across the country and beyond billowing out into the sky, culminating into a cloud of exasperation. Or maybe that's just a dust cloud from the Sahara or gunpowder from the 4th of July. Sometimes it can be hard for me to tell the difference. It was another interesting week in Transformerland with lots of limited edition product hitting the digital shelves and masses of people left with empty shopping carts. The outrage was palpable, and we'll dissect that. But first... Well, you're my... You're my... My... Mom? On their shelf. The official advertised release date of the Target Seeker Pack has come and gone. But that still leaves the Decepticon clones, tentatively scheduled for mass release on July 28th. However, just like the Seekers, these figures are showing up in stores a bit early, and anyone signed up for them on Target.com has certainly received their fair share of in-stock notifications. The problem is that as soon as you get notified, the items are sold out. Some lucky toy hunters in California have found sets of these clones adorning their Transformers end caps, and most stores already have a price placard in place for this set, which is priced at $24.99. If you followed the Seeker release, you can expect these to start hitting shelves in different regions across the country. So keep your Target app close and keep your optics glued to the sightings in your local area. Good luck! New Earthrise Battlemasters are trickling out. Fan favorite Rung is getting a new lease on life and Transformers new darling Slitherfang has slithered his way onto shelves in Canada and Australia. Expect to see these little dudes in the USA before August. A lot of third-party enthusiasts were made whole this week when Fans Toys reissued their popular F-16 Sovereign Masterpiece Galvatron stand-in. The reissue went up for sale on most Transformers online shops for a variety of prices. The reissues of Sovereign were put up on Thursday, July 3rd. And it's gone! Hopefully, if you were looking for this highly sought-after figure, you got a chance to pick it up while the window was still open. FT-16 is set to ship sometime in August of 2020. Well, that's it for the On the Shelf Report, and here's the big new reveals that came across my desk this week. Last week, we saw the Ultra Class version of Thunder Howl and Cyberverse appearing on Target shelves, but this week, official product images of the elusive deluxe version of Thunder Howl hit the net. Thunder Howl is the final deluxe package with parts for Build-A-Figure McAdam, and he comes packaged with the most important bit, the head. Thunder Howl includes a pretty wicked blast effect for his sword, and part of his wolf transformation becomes a shield in robot mode. It's unclear if this release of Thunder Howl marks the end for the Cyberverse Deluxe Size class, but the fiction component to this story has already been wrapped up. What to expect after Cyberverse is currently anyone's guess. The last Constructicon, Skipjack, was featured on the Takara Tomy Twitter account. In-hand photos of the final toy show that this rendition of the mold appears to be a pretty genuine palette swap of Rampage and will help make your Studio Series Devastator even more screen accurate. Remember that the Japanese release of Skipjack will be a Studio Series EX Takara Tomy Mall exclusive and not available at regular retail. However, the Hasbro release of this figure should not be hard to track down in the States. Flame Toys treated the world to yet another redeco of their Furi model kit IDW-styled Optimus Prime. This time he will be cast in 100% translucent plastic, and for fans of that effect, this will be a unique entry into your collection. It is unclear if making all the pieces clear affects the integrity of the figure or quality of the build, but the photos shared did have a certain pizzazz to them. 
Last week I mentioned the incredible non-transforming 24-inch Cybertronian Optimus Prime figure from YOLO Park. The price was finally dropped and so did many collector hearts as the deluxe version's price tag came to a whopping 2500 US dollars. Call me crazy, but I think this is the highest price for any original release retail figure within the Transformers brand ever, outside of some premium statues perhaps. If you just can't withstand a price tag of that magnitude, there's always the somewhat lesser regular version at only $2,100. Well, you know what the kids say. YOLO! Yeah, yeah! And finally, it was hinted at during Fan First Friday that we would learn more about the next Transformers Generations crossover toy, and we certainly did. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Uh... Are you telling me that you built a time machine? Meet Gigawatt, an all-new transforming, time-traveling DeLorean deluxe-sized action figure, complete with lightning rod and Mr. Fusion converting weapon. The character of Gigawatt will be featured in an all-new IDW crossover comic series, similar in fashion to the Ghostbusters crossover from last year. This figure uses a previously released base skeleton, and this time, Siege Sideswipe was happy to lend a hand. The gull wing doors are in full effect, but the re-engineered parts leave a little to be desired in the windshield area. Gigawatt's head is an all-new mold as well, and is meant to evoke the mania of Doc Brown with his test goggles on, although it's hard not to see Rung's face in there at first glance. Both the Transformers and Back to the Future are celebrating 35th anniversaries this year, so the timing couldn't be better. Even without some sort of rebirth of the Back to the Future film franchise on the immediate horizon. News of this release was launched on Mashable early Thursday morning, touting an early limited release of this toy via Walmart.com on Friday, July 3rd. But that's where it all started going downhill. Almost immediately after the initial news hit, the release date was redacted and replaced, saying that the figure would be available later that same day at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Walmart.com. The link provided didn't even work. I'll spare you most of the eye-gouging details, but after about five hours, two million refreshes, and a fandom worth of confusion, all 1,985 limited edition gigawatts had vanished from Walmart.com. There were definitely some mistakes made, and just about all you can find are people that were not able to get a hold of this release. But have no fear, gigawatt will not be a super rare item. This bungled online release was meant to do one thing and one thing only, Build. The. Hype. There are plenty more gigawatts that are going to be made, and if you're patient, it shouldn't be hard to find one at the regular retail price of $29.99. The toy isn't going to be available until the last part of this year, so calm your nerves and be ready to strike once it does become available again. So obviously this sort of timed but limited online release method has caused quite a stir in the fan community. Is it really better to know when an item is going to be made available than random happenstance? When 20,000 people are fighting over less than 2,000 copies of a product, it's clear that the majority of buyers will be left out in the cold. This was done by design. This was a marketing campaign, and we all bought it, hook, line, and sinker. Apparently the only thing special about this early bird release was a limited edition license plate sticker on the front of the box. The toy is expected to be unchanged, but even that detail is unclear. I just plead with anyone listening to just be patient, and there is no need to grossly overpay for a secondhand pre-order, especially since even the Walmart version won't arrive until October or later. I wish I could offer more consoling words, but this is just the world we live in now, where you have to essentially win the lottery to even get the chance to fork over your hard-earned dollars for plastic crack. All I can offer is advice and methods to best prepare yourself for battle. Because in 2020, that's exactly what being a collector feels like. Global Thermal Nuclear War. And with that, I bid thee farewell and look forward to some special interviews on the TF Talk Network coming this week. Thanks for listening and don't be snoozing. The TF Talk Network exists due to the efforts of an enthusiastic collection of Transformers fans across North America and beyond. Check out our variety of shows like Microcasters, Ouch My Wallet, Cut the Tape, 
and our flagship show featuring a rotating all-star cast, TFYLP, which has been running for over 10 years. The cast at the TF Talk Network is always growing, so if you have a desire to participate, reach out to us via any of our social platforms at TFYLP. The TF Talk cast is on Discord. You can join us for free by typing bit.ly slash TF Talk Discord in the browser of your choice. Intro and outro score provided by Surrender. You can find Surrender at surrender-official.bandcamp.com. Directly support our shows and keep us on the air by becoming a monetary supporter of TFYLP on Patreon. Donations through Patreon are used to cover production and server expenses that keep our shows running and are not distributed to individual staff members. If you have any comments or feedback, you can directly email the show at tftalknews at tftalk.net, and we'd love to read some of your comments on the air. And if you've got a hot news tip, send it my way. My calculations are correct. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're going to see some serious shit.